Hey, thanks for hanging in there. This is the final video of the series. What we're trying to build is a tool to manage 1RM loads in a strength program builder. And so this kind of system allows you to collect the information after a workout, look after it, get the 1RMs and put it inside your program building tool. So there are two different ways you might put your data into this file. One of them is relatively straightforward. You don't have to think too much about it. We've got our data set. It's in table format. So as soon as I start typing anything, the table will expand knowing that I've added a new record. It tries to copy the formula down from the row above. Whether or not that's possible depends on whether we have sufficient data in there. So at the moment, we don't have a name in there, so I'm just going to choose one. As soon as I put a name in there, it looks up the reference table on the max page and puts in position and position group. Similarly with exercise, if I put in an exercise that it recognizes, everything's fine. So I could simply type in load and reps and we would get our information that we uh, desire which is the predicted 1RM and the reason it knows that is because of the table reference and copies formulas down so that's a perfectly acceptable way to get data into the database I would recommend that method if it was just uh, the strength coaches putting the information in there if you have athletes entering data in there then it may not be the best option the reason for that is that date has to be entered correctly athlete name has to be entered correctly. You don't want people putting in um, nicknames and things like that in there because the formula will not recognize them. Spelling mistakes are your worst enemy when you're using formula based solutions or pivot tables for that matter, which is why a user form can be a good option. So we've looked at a user form a couple of times. Um, previous video looked at a way to manage athlete notes and this is kind of the same concept. You have to build the form exactly the same way. So if I click on this button, we'll see an example of one user form. Here it is. You've got the ability to type in a date from a list, select the athlete's name, from a list, select the exercise, type in load and reps, a comment if you wanted to, and add it to the database. And you can see there it just becomes the last row of our data set. If you wanted to make things a little bit faster, Instead of clicking Add to Database and launching the whole thing again, you can click Add and Reopen. And so what that does is it pastes the info to the database, but it leaves the date and the athlete name in there on the assumption that you just want to do another athlete rather than um, a new athlete. So little comments can be useful um, and having a place to add them is something that I always like to have in my system. So now I've put the two exercises for this athlete in there, I'm just going to add it to the database. So there we can see those two records appeared at the bottom of the list. Um, if you wanted to uh, make it a bit tidier and have the whole thing work for um, three or four exercises at the same time, you might build a different form such as this one. Most of it's the same, but you can allocate exercises to a program that are important enough that you want to record the loads from. Don't think you gain huge amounts from doing it for every single exercise in your program, but um, sometimes people do that anyway because it's part of a, uh, a, a tonnage calculation or something like that. But for me, I just think the key exercises are the ones to go for. So I've created a form that allows for 
four exercises to be recorded or up to four exercises to be recorded. Now if I hit add to database, it simply adds all four down the bottom there. So um, both of those user forms work exactly the same way. If we want to see them, we click on the developer tab, Visual Basic. If you haven't got the developer tab, in 2013 you click on options, customize ribbon and you check this box here where it says developer once you're in the developer tab you can create a user form by clicking on the insert tab and simply using this toolbox to drag text boxes tick boxes, combo boxes which are drop down lists, text boxes etc onto there. You give them names and uh, write a little bit of code to tell it what to do. So I've already done that obviously. Uh, we just saw those two forms so let's check them out. Here is the form that we've got. I've given these forms uh, names. This particular form is called FRM Strength and each of the different objects on the form has got a name also box date, box athlete, etc and so on. And so when I click this button add to database it runs this piece of code that basically goes to the database page, finds the last row, I've given it PR paste row, it goes to the bottom of the database and then starts pasting in column 1, 3, 6, 7, 8 and 10 the data from our form. It does a little calculation down here so that we get our predicted 1RM and then it unloads the form. So a relatively simple uh, piece of code there. Certainly once you've done it a few times this code's relatively simple and as I mentioned this is the way that I learned to code doing a couple of user forms. On our multiple file there's a little bit more going on because there's more fields so you have to have a bit more code to paste all that in there. So for exercise 1 and then exercise 2 and then exercise 3. You could, uh, if you're a bit better at code than me, write a loop that just loops through those four exercises and paste the code in um, one by one but uh, for the purposes of this demo I just tried to keep it as simple as possible and just do them separately so we've got two options with regard to getting data into it manual entry or user form entry now if you choose user form entry what you need to do is have I've just got um, little images here that I pasted in here, just um, a site that I get various graphics from. You can see them in this logo below as well. Um, and once you've got any kind of object, it could be a simple shape, such as that. You right click on it and you assign a macro. And that macro is going to be one of these two. So either the strength load which is a single exercise or the multi strength load which is the other one so let's just choose that and so now that button launches the form so pretty simple process once you've got the code written anyway the um, the use of user forms is great you do have a few problems when you uh, use different types of computers such as Macs old versions of Excel on a PC and so on give you a few problems so uh, a lot of people aren't big fans of them but if you've got a small little ecosystem i.e. yourself and two or three other strength and conditioning coaches for example what you can do is just make sure it works on your computers and not worry about anyone else's computer so we've got uh, either a slick user form based method of data entry <coughs> or simply go into the database and typing it in. Both will work great. You'll have to then go to your pivot table and refresh so that you get new data filling in. But uh, it's a relatively simple process. Reports don't need refreshing. You can just uh, uh, trust the formula to put that stuff in for you. So there we are. We've been through the, the four videos, data set development, pivot table, 
formula report a max if and today was a user form data entry method I didn't go through and write the code from scratch because uh, that's a whole video of its own where it can take quite a while but uh, feel free to email me for this file and look at the code and copy it and paste it and edit it to your own devices uh, uh, as you see fit uh, thanks for listening to all four and hopefully I won't be too far away from another video soon